Welcome to the premiere session of Well Beats, Well Breaks. My name is Michelle from Well Beats, and I'll be your co-host today. If you have questions throughout today's session, please feel free to send them in through the chat, and then at the end, we will answer some of your questions. Also, keep in mind that today's session is being recorded. As you all probably know, today's Veterans Day here in the US, so I'd like to give an especially warm welcome to any of our veterans and their families that are joining us today. We wish you a very happy Veterans Day and thank you for your dedication and service to our country. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Again, this is the premiere session of Well Beats, Well Breaks. Well Beats is a virtual fitness solution for government and uh, corporate entities worldwide. And our goal with these mini webinars is to inspire well-being in the ever-changing and diverse workplace of 2020. And again, my name is Michelle Ochterberg. I'm a regional vice president with WellBeats. And joining me today for our session is the employee wellness coordinator for Minneapolis Public School System, Lindsay Biller. Lindsay is a public health professional with a master's in public administration. And for the past 10 years, she's worked with healthcare organizations, community healthcare centers, and public sector employers to improve health and well being of their employees. Ms. Biller has worked with Minneapolis Public Schools for four years. And she oversees all aspects of their well being program, including their EAP, their on site clinical services, and well being initiatives and incentives. So, Lindsay, I'll let you take it from here. Hello, thank you for joining us today. So, my name is Lindsay, and I'm the employee wellness coordinator at Minneapolis Public Schools. A little bit about Minneapolis Public Schools is we are one of the largest K through 12 organizations in Minnesota. So we have about 6,200 benefit eligible staff members that we employ and we have about 36,000 students um, in the largest metropolitan area in Minnesota. Um, so we are a very diverse employee group. I think you think K through 12 education, you think teachers, you think support staff, uh, but we also have bus drivers, food service workers, janitors, uh, administrators. And so when we talk about wellness at Minneapolis Public Schools, we have to really reach a broad audience of employees. Um, and so today what I'm hoping to do is really talk to you about how Minneapolis Public Schools has leaned on basically our historical uh, experiences with wellness to really pivot um, and adapt in a changing well being landscape. So, Minneapolis Public Schools has had a wellness program for the past 10 years. So, we're well steeped in wellness. Um, and it's not just the physical well being, which I think people usually think of, you know, going to the gym, working out, being active, but also the emotional well being, financial well being, and how that whole piece really links into our community well-being. Um, so we really strive to implement programs and services that tap into all of those different pillars. What makes us special? Because I believe that Minneapolis Public Schools really does have a very special employee wellness uh, experience. Um, one is that we have a top-down approach to wellness. So what do I mean by that? I mean that wellness is integrated into professional development days. It is uh, spoken about at team meetings. We have over 150 wellness champions and that includes directors, um, executive directors, chief officers, um, principals. We really have a lot of people that own wellness and bring it to their staff, their departments, their meetings. Um, and it really is at the center of what a lot of our work does. Um, but we also use a blend of technology, Michelle mentioned we have you know, the on-site clinic. We tap into all of these different facets so that we have a really customized well-being experience. Um, so again, we integrate it into a lot of services and uh, we actually have an official policy for Minneapolis public schools that not only impacts student well-being because a lot of our work focuses on student well-being, but actually staff well-being as well and how those two really support each other. So how to pivot your wellness program. So this is really important. Uh, Minneapolis Public Schools had a little bit of a head start on this. Uh, so if you think back a year ago, I don't know if you remember, if you're from the Midwest, you will definitely remember, uh, but we had the polar vortex. So there were two weeks where it was sub negative 50. It was really cold. It was unsafe to go outside. People weren't going to the gym. Your car wouldn't start even if you wanted to go to the gym. And so for weeks, people were really trapped at home. So again, in that environment, we really had to analyze 
what tools do we have to support wellness at home? And that's where we actually began the conversation with WellBeats. So we had this pre, you know, existing relationship with them that helped us really be successful at, at pivoting to, to the um, COVID-19 pandemic. No surprise, pandemic hit, and it has never been more important to be socially, emotionally, and physically well at work and at home. Um, so we know if you do wellness, if you work with employees, a lot of wellness programs um, actually you know, are more likely to impact people that are already healthy, already engaging. So now we have the COVID-19 pandemic and we're seeing these vast disparities in how different communities are impacted based on socioeconomic status, based on um, race, community, chronic health conditions. And that was really an eye opener. Again, we know these things, but we really have to be cognizant of them and making sure that we're providing wellness solutions that are applicable to everybody where they're at. And in this case, we were all at home. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back to Michelle for a little bit to talk really a little bit more about what WellBeats is. Thanks so much, Lindsay. It's great to hear about the program that you've created. You've done so many good things there. And I'm glad you had a head start, even though it might have had to experience a polar vortex. Um, so a little bit about WellBeats. And by the way, I've been letting in a few people late to the, to the seminar. So we will send out a recording afterward if you happen to miss the beginning. So as you can see from the slide and the photos here at WellBeats, we believe that being physically active is foundational for health but not just for adults. And you can see that from the picture too. Also for kids through active aging and other specialty groups like pre and postnatal mothers. WellBeats services clients spanning all of those five generations and our holistic content spans exercise and mindfulness as well as nutrition, which fuels both of those. WellBeats pioneered the virtual fitness space in 2008 when there really was no such thing as on demand. We actually started out as a hardware kiosk solution, solution in on-site gyms, and our fastest growing segment now is our streaming solution, which is what we're talking about today with Minneapolis Public Schools. We have something for everyone with nearly 700 videos and audio-based classes across 31 different categories. So these are fitness genres, including things like yoga, Pilates, stretching to high intensity training, otherwise known as HIT, kickboxing, cardio, strength, running, cycling, dozens of others. It's available on all uh, nine different platforms. So everything from all Apple devices. So think small to big, your phones to your iPads, all Androids, all Windows devices. You can Chromecast to your TV with Google and you can AirPlay from your iPhone to your TV. And that's great. So you don't have to do a workout looking at your small, small smartphone. You can actually download WellBeats on your Apple TV itself. And you can access WellBeats on any computer using a modern web browser. So think of anywhere you can get online, you're going to find WellBeats. Also offline too, you can actually download up to 20 of your favorite classes to play later when you don't have data access. We use a personalized approach to drive utilization and we start with a seven question survey to help to get to know each user. So we want to know what you like, what are your goals? And from there, we're going to recommend relevant content. So fun and engaging classes and challenges that are of interest to each user. And so think of it as taking out the guesswork. Many people need guidance. Maybe I haven't worked out since high school. Help me get started again. Others want guidance for family fitness, for example. Help me engage my kids, especially when they're home online with me and build health, healthy fitness habits for the whole family. And our challenges at WellBeats inspire and motivate people to accomplish those goals. And actually we recently lost a launched a uh, challenge, excuse me, with the US Air Force, one of our customers, and they actually designed their own challenge based on their internal fitness assessments that they do for their active duty force. And that's something every client can do. You can customize a challenge for your population. And we even have challenges to provoke an interest in healthy uh, cooking, for example, and nutrition education. We've got over, uh, 2,500 clients across the US and across the globe. And we have people accessing WellBeats from over 60 countries. And then lastly, we're dedicated to maintaining the rigorous compliance standards that are required by corporate and government entities that we serve. So things like SOC 2, type one and two, we have HIPAA compliance, of course, those are just mentioning a few. Also, interestingly, we support those people with disabilities and offer something called WCAG 2.1 standards and that includes closed captioning subtitles to support hearing impaired users. Now we're gonna dive into usage with MPS in a minute, but let's look at some stats first. 
There's over 1.2 million people across the globe and thousands of Wellbeats clients that have Wellbeats today. And not only do they use Wellbeats, but they really love it. So on average, our users engage in over seven classes a month. So that's about two per week. And we track every single class and our average class rating is about four and a half stars. Now the star rating combined with the hundreds of comments that we have on every class help users decide what classes to try. Now, lastly, our net promoter score of 79 is considered world class. So that's a little bit about Wellbeats. So the numbers kind of speak for themselves, but it's always helpful to have a real life example. So Lindsay is actually going to share a little bit more about how they implemented Wellbeats and their experiences. Lindsay? Thank you, Michelle. Um, so Michelle is talking about really what makes uh, Wellbeats special. And I'm gonna talk about really how that manifested at Minneapolis Public Schools. Um, so you can see here the COVID-19 pandemic hit in March. Uh, terrible timing, I was on maternity leave. Um, so we worked with Wellbeats to until I came back, really get a free trial up and running. So while we were working on that contract, waiting for, for everything to kind of finalize, myself to return to work, we actually were able to offer our employees kind of this free, try it well-being experience, which was great because we got all of this great feedback from employees. And when I came back from maternity leave, I had all of these emails from people that were like, are we going to keep this? Can we keep this? I had a couple of union stewards reach out and they're just like, I'm assuming that this is going to be a, an official part of our wellness program going forward. Um, so that really helped make the case when I went to you know, get a contract going and seek approval for a longer term relationship with Wellbeats. Uh, so we officially launched for all employees in July. So you see that big uptick in July in class plays. Um, and this is really interesting because most of our employees in July are actually not working, right? So I sent out this communication through district channels and most of our employees don't work in July, which means that we had to have a little bit of that social engagement going on. So people that were working that saw it we're sharing, we're letting people know that it was available, we're telling people how much they liked it, uh, which is really cool. And then when people came back to work in August, we were able to send out more communications, let people know that this great tool resource was available, and we just keep seeing the engagement go up, which is excellent, as again, we continue to, to bring people into the fold and let them know that this is an option. So one thing that I think is really important to talk about is, you know, we all know that physical activity is really important. And when we talk about, oh, you have to do 30 minutes of exercise, you have to do 60 minutes of exercise to really meet your goals. Um, a lot of times we're excluding people that just maybe aren't at that fitness level. So we had to make sure at Minneapolis Public Schools that we were providing a solution that was applicable to everyone, regardless of fitness level, okay? So if you're not right, like ready to do, you know, 30, 60 minutes of physical activity, there's a solution for you. So you can see here, this is primarily class plays in July and August. Uh, we were seeing huge engagement in that five to 15 minute class play. So those are things you can do in your day. Again, we're all at home at this point. We're all, you know, we've got kids at home. We have busy lives, um, real solutions that you could implement during that day to get a little bit of fitness in. And again, we still had people doing the 40 plus minute class plays because there's a solution for everybody. But this was a really accessible tool for an audience that we have maybe been missing for a, a lot of time. Uh, this is really great to see. Michelle was talking about it's not just a fitness solution, it's the mindfulness solution, um, the nutrition solution. So again, MPS really wants uh, programs that support all facets of wellness. So uh, this is specific to August actually. Our highest class play was Anxious About the Future, which was a grounding mindfulness meditation. Really important considering that we had all these staff returning to work. Am I returning distance learning? Am I doing hybrid? What will the school year look like? What will COVID-19 look like? Um, so the fact that that was such a, a big class play really meant that we were bringing tools and resources that met people where they were at. Um, and then one thing that we see a lot in our health assessment data, in our claims data, is chronic pain. So if you look at some of these other class plays, um, back and neck health is huge. Uh, core strength. And if you are just, you know, you're, you're a mom, you're at home, you're working, you might not necessarily have the tools or resources to, to really take advantage of some of those things that we know that are so important. If we're sitting for the majority of the day, our neck and back health is so important. How do we impact that? What are the tools that we're giving employees to impact that? Um, so it's really great to see some of those things that we've seen in data that are really important rise to the top um, as applicable tools for employees. 
And again, when you implement a tech solution, we always worry a little bit that we're gonna lose some of our audience, but we see here that we are engaging people regardless of age, right? So you can stream it, you can put it on your phone. Are we going to miss a huge chunk of our population that may not be tech savvy? No, was the answer. Um, so we're really happy to see our largest chunk of engagement coming in that 51 to 60 range. Really important, again, thinking about barriers people face to accessing fitness, um, barriers based on disabilities, barriers based on access. Um, so that 51 to 60 range tended to be our, our bigger engagement pool, which is great, but really seeing engagement across ages. Um, and then one of my favorite tools uh, is the ability to customize. So Michelle was talking about thousands of classes, right? Thousands. How do you navigate it? How do you pick a class that might be good for you? Um, and you can siphon through it and do that all yourself. But Minneapolis Public Schools, we know our employees, right? As HR managers, as benefits people, we know what people might be interested in. So we were able to customize a challenge in August based on what we knew people wanted and bring those tools to them so that it made it a little more accessible. You didn't have to siphon through. Or, you know, if I saw a class about lunges, maybe I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. But if it's kind of customized for me, I might be more likely to, to give it a try. Uh, so we used the, the toolkit through Wellbeats to put together some custom communications. Um, and this was a really successful challenge that really helped kickstart our whole program. And it means nothing if people are not happy, right? So you can read some of the really positive comments that we've, we've received from MPS employees. Um, again, some of these people are fitness instructors. So we're engaging people that you know, really know wellness and this is an applicable tool for them. I think one of the biggest things to highlight here is that like mind-body connection. Uh, the person who speaks to like the physical sensation of anxiety at that time and recognizing how important it is to have tools that go both ways. Um, and just a really nice educational, um, something they can implement into their day that's seamless and helpful. And as a K through 12 organization, we'd be remiss if we did not talk about that bridge between staff wellness and student wellness. So we implemented WellBeats as an employee solution, right? Emphasizing that if our employees are well, our students are more likely to be well. Our communities are more likely to be well. Um, what we didn't anticipate was the amount of teachers and staff that really wanted to use WellBeats as a tool in their virtual classroom. Uh, so I think it was like week one of the school year, I had a kindergarten teacher uh, reach out to me and he said, you know, I've been using WellBeats and I really like some of these breathing exercises, these little, you know, two to five minute physical activities that I can implement into my virtual day to get kids moving. Because we as educators recognize sitting is gonna impact not only our learning environments, but our overall health. So he wanted to implement WellBeats with his kids in his kindergarten classroom. So I reached out to WellBeats and I said, you know, can he, can he do this? And WellBeats said, absolutely. Like we, we encourage it. We recognize as well that it's important that if we're not engaging just the employee, but the family and the community is, are all getting well together. Um, so that was one of the really positive things that we saw at the start of this school year. So what comes next for us? Uh, you know, even we talk about this in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, but even as the pandemic hopefully gets better and improves and we go back to, you know, our new normal, as they're saying, uh, it's not time to ease up on wellness, it's time to double down on wellness. So we're really looking at continued partnership. I mentioned we use Vitality as our, our online fitness or our online uh, wellness tool that does assessments and things like that. Uh, we're working on an integration there with WellBeats and Vitality, which we're really excited about in 2021, um, and just really enhancing the overall employee experience, which we do by getting feedback from employees and then working with WellBeats as a partner to say, you know, here's where, where we need a little bit of extra support. And WellBeats has been a really great partner for us in having those conversations. So thank you so much. And I think we have some time here for questions. Yes, Lindsay, thank you so much. That was all so very interesting. Um, and as we promised, this was going to be a short, these are mini webinars. And again, this was the first one that we put on. If you happen to come in late, we will have recorded this and we'll be sending it out. So you can pass it along to other colleagues that perhaps couldn't make it live today. So let's see, we'll start with uh, the first question. And this is for Lindsay. So what's up next for um, engagement or your favorite WellBeats activity? Yeah, so we are doing some cool things. Um, we just launched a class play of the day 
communication where we're actively promoting through our internet and our company newsletter, basically like a, a favorite class play of the day. Um, we're gonna start with small class plays. So something that can easily be implemented into your day and really try to advance it and move into um, you know, longer, more intensive options. Uh, so we just launched our first one yesterday, which was really cool. Uh, we already had, I believe, just in the first few hours of doing it, about 50 people who had already clicked on it and done it, which is great. Um, and, and again, helping drive some of those customized tools so people can be healthy. So uh, I know I, in the data I shared, it kind of ends in August because that's when we quit. You know, we all went back to school in August, but really trying to keep driving some of these tools and then doing some other special things around the holidays, which we know is also a, a big time for health and well-being. So. We're gonna keep moving with it. Awesome. Okay, another quick question, Lindsay, since you're already talking. Um, and this, this person said, Lindsay, sorry if I missed this, but are you providing incentives uh, to employees to participate? And if so, what kind of incentives? Great question, really great question. And you didn't miss it because I didn't say it. Um, so yes, we are providing incentives. So we kind of have two ways of doing that. So we have vitality points, which are, monetary incentives that employees can turn in for bucks. Um, so right now I'm doing that by hand. So I encourage people to participate and then I give them the points. Um, and then in 2021, that's, that integration will be seamless. So when employees do a class play, they'll earn the vitality points that they can turn in for gift cards and other rewards. Um, we also give some swag. So we, you know, we have some swag that we've been given out through Wellbeats, but also just like little trinkets, again, of de minimis value, but they mean a lot to employees. Um, so we've been doing a little bit of work with that as well. And that helps us, again, drive some of that feedback. So not only take the class, but also tell us how you felt about it. Um, and, and we've been doing some incentives around that. But I definitely think um, people are engaging because they want to engage, but it is that little carrot that also helps remind people and drive them to do what they already want to do. So incentives are important. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Um, this one I think is for Wellbeats. So I'll take this one. Um, can you talk a little bit about Wellbeats and social features? So yes, uh, Wellbeats does have social features. In fact, um, it's something that we're expanding upon in a release that's coming up next month. So in just about 30 days, you'll be able to, inside Wellbeats, schedule a class for yourself in the future. So let's say, for example, I know I wanna take yoga at 3 p.m. today or at 5 p.m. at the end of my work day. And that will add to my calendar inside Wellbeats as well as I can put it on my work calendar or the calendar on my phone. And then additionally, you'll be able to invite friends. And that could be friends inside Minneapolis Public Schools. So as long as I know your email and they have agreed that they wanna be public, if you will, in terms of being able to be searched, um, Lindsay, I could invite Lindsay and we could take a class together and then, uh, Lindsay would be able to see, and I would be able to see other people that we know that are in that class. So that really supports some of the social engagement. And then shortly thereafter, coming up early in 2021, we'll also be integrating other types of social features where you can high five and almost interact live, if you will, with other people in the platform. And I know Lindsay is super excited about that for Minneapolis Public Schools. <laughs> She's smiling if you can't see her. Um, okay, uh, here's another question. How are you able to track? Because you saw those great reports that we provided. Um, and somebody wants to know, how are you able to get this insight about employee engagement in the WellBeats program? So that all is driven from the eligibility file. So each client that we work with gives us an eligibility file. And it could be once a month, twice a month, every week whatever works for you all. And that includes information, um, if you can give it to us, such as uh, sex and age, so that we are able to report that back in reporting. Now, if you're not able to include that in the eligibility file, the, the actual users can self-report that as well. But that's really helpful then, and we can break it down. So for example, um, if Minneapolis Public Schools system chose that they wanted to break it down by school, they could do that from a reporting standpoint too. Uh, let's see. Lastly, we have somebody asking about how it works after the fact in terms of uh, customer success and, and how we work with Lindsay. So maybe I'll give you an overview and that let, let Lindsay add on. So every client um, with Wellbeats will have a, a client success team that works with them very closely. 
from a strategic perspective, as well as a team that helps operationally for things like password resets, et cetera. But from a strategic perspective, it's all about us helping you get value from the program. So we want you to be successful. We want people to be to use it and we want to impact people's lives. And so that client success manager is going to have a regular cadence of meetings where we talk about what's worked, what hasn't worked, what else can we do, um, letting you know about new things coming up, for example, this social feature, et cetera. Lindsay, I think you work with um, someone on our team, right? Yeah, so my account manager at Minneapolis Public Schools is Megan, uh, and she's been fantastic because you think about all that goes into not just implementing a program, but also communicating it. So she works with me again on some of the insights, driving some of those communication tools that WellBeats has ready-made, so I don't have to do all of that myself and create all my own communications from scratch, which is really helpful. And then also bringing some of those analytics and giving us a different perspective. So I know at Minneapolis Public Schools, we we see what we see through our Minneapolis public schools lens, but also bringing in some of those maybe best practices from other industry leaders or what other client groups maybe are finding effective so that we're having some of that cross collaboration, which is always helpful to help kind of drive next steps or best practices. Yes. Oh, excellent. So thank you so much. And, um, you know, we always try to integrate holistically with our clients, other programs, right. And we could even do that across things like your EAP or um, mental health programs, even things like manager training or chronic condition programs so that when your employees call those other hotlines or customer care teams, that they're aware of WellBeats and they can remind people, hey, do you know you have this resource, WellBeats, and they'll have information to help them get online. So in general though, our client success managers kind of have a whole two toolkit of different best practices, as Lindsay said, and there are different levers that we can pull to increase engagement throughout the year. Well, I think that's it for questions today. So again, thank you so much for joining us here today on the holiday Veterans Day. We will again, make this recording available if your colleagues were not able to access it live and you'll be on our list. We'll be letting you know about the next um, many webinar coming up. Thank you all, have a great week. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you.